If you do like these tank chats, do please subscribe to the Tank Museum's YouTube channel. Now this is FV4202. It's actually known as the 40 ton Centurion, which is like saying it's a bit lighter. It actually weighs 41 tons, but no one seems to bother about that. It was just a question of having a catchy title. It's quite an interesting vehicle. It was built by Leyland Motors in 1956 to try out one or two ideas that were in the air towards the new Chieftain that was coming out shortly. Now, it's an unusual vehicle. Only three were built, and this is an amalgam of two of them. It's the remains of the one donated to the Tank Museum many years ago, plus another one which had been donated to Remy at Borden and used as a recovery hulk. They got rid of it, they came down here, and we made one tank out of two. It still doesn't look very good, but it's quite an interesting vehicle. The third one, rumour has it, went to Israel. What they were supposed to do with it, Lord alone knows, but they, they've got one anyway. Whether it's in their museum, I don't know. But it's quite an unusual vehicle. Now, the 40-ton Centurion is quite interesting because they were only built to try out these new ideas. It wasn't really intended as a tank at all. Although a lot of people argue that the, the way it's finished, with all the stowage and everything else, it's as good as any other tank in many respects. But it's quite odd in that it's the only tank ever powered by the Rolls-Royce Meteorite engine. The Meteorite was a V8. It was really a sort of shrunken version of the old Meteor, the V12, and it generated about 400 horsepower. But it was only ever used in this particular tank. It was used in the Antar tank transporter in quite large numbers. It was actually used in the um, your TV 1000, the six wheel vehicle. But other than that, it, it was never used in a tank as such, except for this vehicle here. So it's quite an interesting vehicle from that point of view. It's shorter than the Centurion. You can see that from the way the road wheels are down to five instead of six on each side. That's like two clusters of four, which work on a horseman system, but internally, and then a fifth wheel at the front, which um, is working on half a system, if you like. So it's an unusual vehicle in that way. Now, it is an, there's another unusual feature as well. One of Chieftain's main assets was the fact that it was much lower than Centurion. And for that reason, they used a 28-inch diameter road wheel a bit smaller than the road wheel on Centurion. The Centurion ran on road wheels of 31 inch diameter and this particular machine, in fact all three of them, were fitted with the Centurion wheels. So it is that much taller. But it has two other features which are specifically done to test out ideas for um, Chieftain. The first of course is the needle nose turret. It's got a 20 pounder gun in, which is quite authentic. The only trouble is the gun's been wedged in, it's not fitted properly. So it doesn't really give you a good idea of what it would have looked like. But that needle nose turret is quite interesting. It's very heavily armoured, 170 millimetres on the front, and it's welded to the back half of a Centurion turret. So it's an odd setup at the best of times. But it was done to try and Imagine what the turret would have looked like, and that's why it's like it is. The other thing they did was first introduced here, that's the reclining driver's position. Now, what they did was use the original hatch, the right-hand one of the Centurion, not the central position that was used in the, um, the Chieftain, but it still has the up-and-swing type of hatch lid to it there, which opens like a Chieftain's hatch. But the inside, it's quite odd. It has the reclining seat for the driver, but he can't actually drive in the reclining position. In the reclining position, in the Chieftain, the driver has two steering levers close by his side, and he has a foot-operated gear change, rather like on a motorcycle. On this, he's got the normal gear change of a Centurion between his knees, 
which actually normally takes both hands to change, and he has a full set of pedals arrayed across the front, which are difficult to work, impossible in fact to work lying down. You can only work on them sitting upright, and it has steering levers well forward, so you have to sit upright to drive the tank properly anyway. But it's got this reclining seat, so that the driver can at least show the reclining position in this hull, but it does seem an odd arrangement, not being geared up to take the chieftain's method of driving at all. It's pure Centurion in that respect. Um, same transmission, Merritt Brown, and the same driving arrangements at the front as the Centurion, which makes it quite an interesting contrast because it's not merely meant to be like that at all. But that allows for this strange shape um, the tank's actually fitted with a set of Centurion Hush Puppy tracks. They're these tracks with the rubber blocks on. They're not the originals. The original tracks were like Centurion Open Weave, but narrower. And um, they've, they've gone somewhere. They've got lost in the process of time. And these ones have replaced it. And they're only there to show what, that it ought to have tracks on it, which it's got. But they're not the original ones, not by any means. And really... An engine of 400 horsepower is not quite got the oomph for a 41 ton tank. It's a little bit slow, but uh, it was only for demonstration purposes. That was all they produced it for, as far as we know. If you like these films, please do subscribe to the Tank Museum's YouTube channel. And if you can, please do support us on Patreon.